Hello again. Thank you for being here. It's because of you why my channel is growing at a lovely steady pace and I'm really, really grateful for that. We need to take a look at how the electricity in this case is generated and how it moves through the system as current. So it may come as no surprise whatsoever that the conductible core of the wire is usually made of copper because copper is a very good conductor of electricity. And what do I mean by a good conductor? Well, to answer that, we'll have to take a look at the smallest part of the copper, the copper atom. And basically, it's the structure of the copper atom that makes copper so conductible. And that is, whilst it's got 29 electrons that orbit its centre nucleus, it's this electron that exists alone on the outside of all of them that allows for that conductivity. And how does it do that? Well, each time the magnetic field of the flywheel's fixed magnet passes some of the copper coiled wire inside the coil pack. This lone outer electron, which has less electrical attraction to its atom, is pushed on forward away from the atom by that magnetic field. And as we will see in a moment, this is pushed towards the next atom. And this atom now doesn't just sit there without an outer electron. And that's because now the electron has moved away, the electrical charge of this atom has changed. It's changed because when all the electrons were present, 29 of them, bearing in mind that all the 29 electrons have a negative charge, for the copper atom, this matched the 29 positively charged protons within its nucleus. So with all the 29 negatively charged electrons and the 29 positively charged protons, this means that the overall charge of this atom is neutral, because both charges, although being opposite, are equal in strength. But now this particular atom has lost one of its negatively charged electrons. That means that it only has 28 negatively charged electrons, but it still has 29 positively charged protons. That means that the overall positive charge for this particular atom outweighs the negative charge. But because it has lost an electron, whilst that electron is not present, it's no longer called an atom. It's called an ion. And of course, because the overall charge is positive now, it's called a positive ion. And the scientific name for a positively charged ion is a cation. And that means because it has an overall positive charge, it will attract a negative charge, which is in the form of another negatively charged electron. And as soon as this new negatively charged electron enters the orbit of the positively charged cation, it becomes an atom once again neutral in charge because we've got the same amount of negatively charged electrons as we have positively charged protons. But how does this all relate to creating an electrical current? Well, to answer that, we'll bring in some more atoms. And so using this in a very basic and easy way to explain it, the important thing to focus on here is the lone outer electron that we looked at. Because it was this electron that was pushed this way by the magnet's magnetic field. Now of course, the magnet moving past the wire wouldn't just move the electron from one atom, it would move the electrons from billions. I'm just making this simple example. So to get things going, let's imagine that this electron has received enough stimulus or enough power of strength to move it out of the orbit of its atom and towards the next atom. As it's pushed towards there, it encounters the negative charge of the next outer electron. And as we know, it's only opposites that attract, so only positive and negative will come together. Two negatives repel each other. And so as this negatively charged electron is forced towards the next negatively charged electron, it pushes this electron out of its orbit. And because momentarily this atom loses its outer electron, as we've seen, it now becomes a positive ion. And that attracts the negatively charged electron that was originally forced towards it. And so this electron settles into its orbit. And of course, momentarily, this makes it a neutrally charged atom again. So in a nutshell, the electron that was forced towards this atom has pushed its outer electron out of place and took its place. I'm giving this explanation nice and slowly so we can get an understanding. 
but all of this would happen at something close to the speed of light. So we know about this atom and its electron, but what about the atom it's just come from? Well, as we've seen, because this no longer has an outer electron, it now becomes a positive ion, and it wants to attract a negatively charged electron. And so where does it get it from? Well, it doesn't get it from this way, because there's a force which pushed the electrons that way, away from the atom. So it's going to take it from this way. So it will now attract the electron from this atom. So how could the attraction of this ion possibly pull the electron out of the atom's orbit? Surely it has the same strength of attraction to keep the electron exactly where it is, in its orbit. Well, the answer to that might lie in the electrical circuit itself. Because just for simplicity, if we imagine the electrical circuit being in a loop like this, then we can now imagine that when a stimulus moves one electron from an atom across to the next atom, and that electron then forces the electron from that atom forward, then that's going to keep going on as like a chain reaction down the system. Each time an electron is moved across, it moves the one in front of it, and the one in front of it moves the one in front of it, and it just keeps going like that right round the circuit, creating a movement of electrons in this certain direction. So then it's clearer to see that whilst this atom is in a positive state as an ion, ready to accept a negatively charged electron, then the system is ready to actually provide that, because there would be a flow heading this way. This negatively charged electron would be pushed across to it by the electron before it. So we can see now as far as this system goes that when we move electrons across it causes that chain reaction and all those electrons move in that direction and this is what we call electron flow. This is the electrical current. And of course if we want to keep the flow we've got to keep providing the stimulus to move those electrons across and that's done by repeatedly passing the ignition coil with the fixed magnet on the flywheel. So our system would consist of the copper coiled wire in the coil pack where the electrons are pushed forward initially and then it goes through the electrical wires through the HT lead to the spark plug down the special conductive core of the plug the arc across the gap and as the arc across the gap that's creating the spark and they instantly move through the outer grounded area of the spark plug and into the engine body. The engine body, or the ground, then has contact with the ignition coil and some of the copper coiled windings inside. Because if the electrons weren't somehow replenished in the copper coiled windings, then it would surely run out of electrons, and obviously that does not happen. So this is where the circuit of electron replenishment comes in. This is where the copper coiled windings keep finding the electrons from to use in the system.